Welcome back to my channel, everyone. Far as Maya can see, today I'm going to be showing you the day in the life as an aquaculture intern working at the MSU Pearl. And this is a video from one of our busier days where we have all hands on deck and a lot of moving parts and just a bunch of tasks to complete. So first of all, when you enter the hatchery, before you even think about entering the hatchery, make sure you have your rain boots on. This is essential gear. If you don't, you'll have wet socks, wet shoes, and an overall bad day. So be prepared. All right, so every day we have a few tasks to complete in the morning, our little morning routine before we get into you know the bigger task of the day. And one of those tasks is swirling algae. So on the left, I'm swirling algae flasks, and I'm also swirling algae carboys, those big guys on the right, just because sometimes algae settles at the bottom. All right, this is Kayla and I at the pier. Every day we use the YSI to check the environmental data, like the salinity, pH, temperature, and dissolved oxygen. Back to the lab. We are siphoning out water from these big tanks, and those tanks, believe it or not, are contained with oyster larvae. And believe it or not, also on that sieve right there, that is oyster larvae. And it's pretty dense, so there is a lot there in this video, and the pink is a good sign of health in the oyster larvae. So from the sieve, I put it in this beaker, diluted a bit with some water, and there I was just swirling it to evenly distribute the larvae throughout the volume of water. Then I pipette it out, you know, getting some good samples. So first I look under the light microscope to see if there's any larvae at all. Are they, if they're there, are they active, are they swimming, or are they just, you know, just sitting there? So this is an example of what active oyster larvae look like. So this is an example of a healthy batch. I believe this was like a two day culture from a previous spawning. So once I see that, I add some knockout, which is just alcohol, a um, few parts of alcohol and a few parts of water, I believe. And then I count it. I also measure them. And this lets us know if the larvae are growing to a good size, um, are they healthy? And sometimes we have contaminants in the um, water that we're sampling from like this for example. Welcome to the acid wash room where we clean things that cannot be cleaned with bleach. And make sure you have the proper safety gear on when you're in here or you will have a pretty unfortunate day. We also clean bag filters. You see me getting it in on the right. Our favorite task, cleaning water bottles to put soft shell clams in with sand. And we love shucking oysters and even power washing the shells is a task that we do sometimes as well. Welcome to the lovely Mako Cove. We have Dr. Ming Lu, a researcher here at the Pearl, and Shavish, a graduate student at the Pearl, digging in the water, fishing out oyster cages for Jessica and I over on the right to collect.
Sorry? Oh, the crawl that is a fine. You don't need to bring that back. It doesn't oh, work here. After the collection and cleaning of the oyster bags, we dump its contents out onto the table to do some bag cleaning. So typically when we're doing this, we find a lot of mud crabs and we just put them back where they belong. So what Jessica and I are doing, we are determining which oysters are dead and which ones are alive and just keeping count of them. And then we're going to re-bag the alive ones and put them back into the water. So on to our next task, oyster feeding. So for feeding the oyster larvae, I would get the specific algae that they need out of a carboy like this. Today they need Milford Mono, and each bucket got like a different amount, so bucket six is going to need 40 ml. Uh, so first thing I do is take the tube that supplies air for the algae off of this initial tube right here, and I place it on the drying tube so the air would push down into there so it, the algae would come up out of this tube right here. So it's coming up slowly. I haven't been able to get the right measurement off for it at all, but let's see if I'm lucky this is the last one. Body. Now I gotta put four milliliters of the chaga into this bucket and then the other ones have like preferences. So I have to do four times with the pipettes. I know if you're a biology student, you've seen this so many times. So I'm just gonna do a thousand four times in microliters convert to four milliliters into this. Now since these oysters are just so fancy, they get two types of algae. So I already gave them the initial Milford Mono, and now they get Chagra. So, fed everybody. Now I gotta put four milliliters of the Chagra into this bucket, and then the other ones have like preferences. So I have to do four times with the pipettes. I know if you're a biology student, you've seen this so many times. So I'm just gonna do a thousand four times in microliters convert to four milliliters into this bucket. Let me make the right one, bucket 11. This is not the right one. Bucket 11 is over here. And I do that four times. So boom, here's the next joint. This is the cowell, the big boy. I got the algae in it for the soft shell plants. 
take this spout, add it on, because we do not want it spraying everywhere. We only need 2,600 milliliters. Open it. Like so. Oh gosh. She gets there pretty fast. So there's obviously a lot more tasks that we complete from a day-to-day -day in the hatchery. These are just some of the ones that I was able to capture on camera, but we do work hard this summer and we've all enjoyed it. I'm working with an amazing team of interns and mentors and graduate students, and I'm really excited. Thank you for tuning into this video and please look out for the rest of my videos because the next one will be talking about oyster spawning.